Hex stayed with Percy while he was in where he always woke up. He's at the island of Sodor. A magical place where life goes on its natural. Hmm. Now that I say that, Sodor isn't really that magical a place, but whatever. Percy woke up in a sighting. Thomas and Nintendo agents had taken up all the spots in the shed the night before, leaving Percy no space at all. Percy woke up with the smoke box frozen. It had been a cold night before. His fire made the smoke box heated up again and he remembered to go to the top station to meet Sir Topham Hatt and to bring Thomas with him. He, hit, he headed for the turntable. He then later spun to the roundhouse and entered the shed siding where Thomas was at. As the driver connected the two of them together, Percy chuckled. Welcome to Revenge, Thomas. You're in for a treat. When the chamber between them were coupled and tied, Percy set off. So quietly and so gently, Thomas doesn't notice that he is getting pulled away. He did a pretty good job. Tom had blew when they made to the station, so Tom had blew his whistle, which woke up Thomas in an instant. Ah! Where am I? said Thomas. Where well, am I at the station? He asked, puzzled to where he was being relocated. Thomas, you have some unfinished business to deal with, Sir Thomas had said. A little bit of business from yesterday. Percy chuckled. After Thomas's punishment had been clear, Percy was to shun Thomas's train. Thomas later remembered an important piece of information that he had never told any of the other Tegans when they came when they came and left so. When Percy was finished hunting, he warned Percy about the tender engines. Be careful with the tender engines, warned Thomas. Sometimes they could be mean. Edward, the kind of old blue number two engine could never be mean. Understand that? asked Thomas. Understood, replied Percy. Good, said Thomas. As he cut up to his freight train, he then later set off. Once he was out of sight, Percy then later headed to the yards. He too was also following the freight train. When Percy arrived at the yards, he met he met Edward, the kind old blue number two engine. Hello, said Percy. You must be Edward. My name is Percy. I'm supposed to pick up a train heading to Crobin's Gate. Percy smiled. Pleasure to meet you, Percy. I heard all about your train. I set it up all for you. You're all set to go. Thanks, replied Percy. He headed out to pick up his train and one of the shut sidings in the yards. Thanks again, Edward. You made you made today's work so easy. You're welcome, Percy, said Edward. See you around. Percy thought there were more engines like him and Thomas, but there are more engines like Edward and Gordon instead. There was a red engine named James and a long green one named Henry. Percy entered through the Wellsworth station. There, both of them were there, collecting passengers. Whoosh! They said. They both said in unison as they reached Percy at the same time as they left. Port Percy was covered in dust, smoke, coal, and soot. Poor Percy, he thought to himself. Nobody likes me, said Percy. He then later. Head on, continued to Crovin's Gate. That night, Edward kept the fire station watch just in case there was a fire, and they could be first responders. He was also keeping Thomas company too. Thomas was Thomas was grounded. His punishment was to stay in the siding for an entire week. Percy joined the two rather than spend another night rather spend a night at the roundhouse with the tender engines that had been mean to him earlier. 
They told him about today's about today's predicament. They wish that be, said Percy. And Gordon scared me with his big angry face when I ran into the same land as he was. Apparently, he was heading away from Cor from Corbin's gate. I was worried about this, said Thomas. This is why I'm the only tang agent here. And everyone else here is a tender agent, added Edward. It's basically survival of the fittest, Percy. As a tank agent, you have to survive here. Well, we have to show them a lesson, said Percy. We have to show them what real tender what real tank engines can do, Thomas, said Percy. I'm with you too, said Edward. It's time for for a change on here. Okay, guys, said Thomas. You guys have to go, because I have to be here at all the time. So let's think of a, so let's think of a plan that will make the tender engines remember. They they chatted all through the night. At five in the morning, Edward and Percy set up with the plan while Thomas stayed behind due to, due to the controller's orders. Good luck, you two, he said. Percy waited at the, in, in front of the station, Wellsworth station while Edward marshaled the trains that were being pulled by Gordon, Henry, and James. Gordon trimmed the express coaches. The passengers were already there and began to board. The passengers that were on the other side of the station took the pedestrian bridge and they crossed to the other side. While they were crossing, Edward came in with the next train, two log cars that were being pulled by Henry. J he then later returned with James's train to find little passengers. Three, three good trains. Once Percy's big train was completed, Edward switched to the line next to him. Edward cheered from the line next to Percy. Go, Percy, he said. Go, go, go. Ra, ra, ra. He chanted as Percy left the station slowly like a turtle. However, after Percy left the station, Edward heard a whistle that sounded like James. Edward then later fled the scene. James, Henry, and Gordon were all very cross. Trains have disappeared mysteriously. No possible explanation. Look, Sam Henry. Sawdust. I was supposed to pull a log train. Maybe we can follow the sawdust. It will lead to our culprit, said Gordon, feeling with great pride. That's an awesome idea, Gordon. Now let's follow that sawdust. And the entrance did. Gordon headed for us, followed by Henry and James. Percy was getting tired and beginning to slow down. This train is all too much. This train is all too much, he panted. Edward soon was later not that far from Percy, and not too far from the tender and then heard their entire plan. Hurry, come on, Percy. James is ordered and Henry are coming really quickly, and they're coming to for your train, he said. Oh, Jesus, I better hurry, said per exclaimed Percy, and he gained more speed. However, Percy, Percy sh shook with the train, and the lock in the, in the lock car with the open ends began to spill out more sawdust for 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 Gordon, Henry, and James to follow. This way, exclaimed Gordon, and he as he yelled, "The truth is on." Soon, James spotted the brake van. There's our train! Said, There's our train! Said James from the corner of his eye. Oh yeah, there it is, said, said Gordon. But who's pushing it? Questioned Henry. We must go see who it is. Faster, faster, faster! Urged Gordon. As, as, as Percy and Edward made it to, made it back to, to Crovin's gate, 
where where the where the first stop was to drop off James Good Trains, James Henry and Gordon cross lines. They didn't. They didn't notice who was pulling until they see a light green paint with number six labeled next to it. They also didn't notice that Spurs Hopman Hat was there. Good line. Good time, Percy. Percy panted and was speechless. Percy, why did you steal our trains? Confronted Gordon. Well, to to do, do, see, to show you that that the, 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 the tank engines can be as good as the. the the, 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 the tender engines and pull up good trains and do important jobs too, Percy panted. And Percy was also able to beat the record time, says the top and had checking the stopwatch. Percy does have a point. You guys must need to be kinder to P Percy and Thomas. Percy, I also gave you guys the day, the day off because he did all your work for you. Well, if it's a day off, yes, sir," said Gordon. He puffed away to the shed. "See, si, Senor," said Henry as he followed Gordon. "Your wish is our command," said James as he stalked the two of them. They all whisked away to the sheds for, to have a relaxed for day off. "Good job, Percy," said, con congratulated the fat controller. "You stood up for your rights, and I'm proud of you." "Thank you, sir," said Percy with a feeling of triumph in his smoke box. Percy awaited a push from Edward back to the sheds. To take a triumphant siesta. That's not Hispanic, by the way. I am telling you this because you guys suck at Spanish.